Hello, people. We're so glad you're here. And look what I have. I have an abundance of riches of artists. I've got Lydia Graves. Wave your hand, Lydia. Hey. Behind and Takeda Andrews with her gorgeous art. And Sarah Walsh, raise your hand with her beautiful kitchen. And a little peek of that living room. Gorgeous. <laughs> Nice neutrals. Type in where you are. Open the chat and type in. Hello, Kashani. Make sure that when you go to the bottom of the chat, the blue thing says everyone so everybody can read your stuff. Hello from India and Berkeley. I love Seattle, Arizona. We have so much goodness today. First of all, I picked these three artists that I who I represent. I wanted to talk to them because they're just so freaking awesome and great and have so much wisdom for you. Uh, they're going to, we're going to talk about things like what's the secret to becoming a successful illustrator or to develop a masterful style. I know so many of you want to know how to get a good style, beautiful style. What's the day-to-day -day life like for an illustrator? What work did you share to get an agent? What advice would you give someone just starting out in illustration? Words of advice. Hey, Becky, glad you're here. Our, that's our, um, that's our, our, our admin person. What do you love about being an illustrator? Plus, we have a giveaway. And guess what, Becky? Guess what I'm doing for the giveaway? I said, why don't I give away the course of your choice? Any live course of your choice in the giveaway. That'll be toward the end. So do stick around for that. Let's see what else. Oh, we have a lot of people here already. Wow. Um, let's, uh, and, and also uh, we have Q&A at the end. So you can put your questions in the Q&A box and you can address it to any of the artists or in general or to me. <clears throat> so let me introduce Takeda. Takeda, you want to raise your hand? Oh, they can see your name probably. Takeda is an artist and illustrator from Richmond, Virginia, although she didn't pursue a career as an artist until she was in her 30s, which I guess sounds old to some of you. That sounds young to me. Takeda started off primarily as a painter and found her voice in the world of illustration. Since then, she's represent, she has illustrated book covers, greeting cards, all kinds of products and picture books. She's been represented by Lilla Rogers Studio since 2021, and her clients include HarperCollins, HarperCollins UK, American Greetings, Dorling Kindersley, Penguin Books, Raspberry Books, Mud Puppy, and more. And look what I just got in yesterday, or a couple of days ago. This is a puzzle that Takeda did. How gorgeous is that? Let me zoom it in for you. I don't know, is it blurry, but... So great. So that's just one of the many projects. And I don't know if you have this to hold up too. Yes. <laughs> okay, she'll probably flip through that. So welcome, welcome, Chiquita. Do you want to hold up a few of your products that you've gathered? Um, sure. Um, like you just posted, this is the everybody. Oops. Okay, let me keep it right here. Um, this is the everybody board book that I did with uh, Penguin workshop and rise and it's I love this book it talks about I think it's a little bit more than body positivity but it's just it's just about acceptance of your bodies and the different bodies that people have um, not just your size but you know the different you know parts of our bodies that may be different from other people so it's a great great conversation book and then um, this technically is the first book. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move the art out of the way so you can actually so you can actually see it. <laughs> doing that, I'll just give people a tour of of this book. Oh, good, you did it very really well. That was fast. <laughs> okay, so this is like the first picture book that I illustrated, um, an Earth Song, which is a poem by Langston Hughes. And um, I really enjoyed this project because they did give me like um, the freedom to like come up with the the, the illustrations 
uh, you know, from scratch. And, and, and I concentrated on a little boy because I mostly do girls. And so I was really excited. I have one son. I have four girls and one son. So I kind of felt like this is my <laughs> dedication to him since he knows that I draw a lot of girls and women. Ada, can you open, can you open up? Uh, this is one of my favorite scenes from the book. Um, Langston Hughes lived in, and worked in Harlem. So this is me imagining him in Harlem and he actually has a little the um they wanted me to include him in there so there's him work walking in the neighborhood so great and so we also included some and um, this is the Marcus this is supposed to re represent Marcus Garvey Park that's mm -hmm. also near Harlem as well look at the bird how she throws in from the aerial view I just think that's so clever. We get a sense of the space or something. It's very nice. Yeah, that particular bird, this black bird, is supposed to be one of the first signs of spring in New York or in that area. So that's why I included that in there. Um, I also think brought uh, a couple of covers. I like doing book covers. So here are a couple of covers that I did. This one was for uh, Harper Collins, uh, their Christian um line and then this one was Harper Collins UK right which I, I did the cover and also some some inside illustrations as well and this is a puzzle that um the illustration I did was licensed by Buffalo Games oh great so, so what that means I'll translate she has a number all my artists have existing work personal work they've done whatever they send it to us and we try to get it licensed picked up by a company and the company pays for it or pays in advance in royalties and use licenses the right to use it on a product yeah. so that's what happened there and this one uh was licensed by artists to watch and this was from uh assignment boot camp that we did a couple of years ago. And they turned it into a Father's Day card to go along with another illustration that I did um, for a Mother's Day card. Okay. And um, then we have Reading Adventures, which I did some illustrations in this book, along with Ruth, who is another one of your artists. Um, so this one was just... Uh, was different illustrations to kind of summarize the books yeah. that are being discussed here. So this one was fun because I do a lot of um, illustrations featuring people. And so this one gave me opportunity to stretch with the people illustrations as well as different objects and things of that nature. So that was fun as well. And then we have the embroidery, I which love I absolutely that. love. <laughs> I love that. Pull it up a little high. I really like. I really like. Uh, she actually uh, stitched this on the back. Um, you never know what you're gonna get as an illustrator. Yeah. So this one is just a bunch of my illustrations that I previously did, and she just turned them into um, iron-on. You can just iron it on and stitch it. Great. I have to do it. I have to do it. That's beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for that beautiful show and tell. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll look at Sarah's product and then we will um, open up. And and Lydia, do you have artwork to show? I do. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So Sarah, let's go. Thank you so much for that. Um, Takita, and we're going to, yeah, I'll ask everybody the questions kind of free form. So, as I know you're all wondering, um, oh, the who is she who turns the art into things? Um, that's the owner of the company of Sublime Stitching, Jenny. Uh, her last name at the moment, <laughs> but um, the, the she, she owns that company. Yeah, sublime. So, 
She was one of the first <clears throat> embroidery people doing full art. Yes. Okay, Miss Walsh. Miss Walsh. Sarah Walsh lives in Kansas City. Hello. She's a professional illustrator and designer for more than 20 years. She works digitally and traditionally with a mix of acrylic wash, colored pencils, Photoshop, and Procreate. And while her projects and style have evolved over the years, bright colors and quirky characters have been a constant factor in her art. Her clients include pretty much everybody who does school art, which is Simon & Schuster, Chronicle, Penguin Random House, Nosy Crow, Blue Q, Frankie Magazine, Mud Puppy, Flow Magazine, Hallmark Cards, Nordstrom, Crate and Barrel, Running Press, and the Washington Post, among others. Wow, you have a good agent. Who is it? Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> this really cool lady named Willa. And Susan and Kim, of course. And Susan and Kim, yes. Um, so let's see, Miss Walsh, you've been with me 10 years or so? so. Um, I think I signed on in 2013. So, yeah, it's it'll be... It'll be our anniversary soon. <laughs> we'll like get each other anniversary presents. <laughs> um, so will you hold up some of your projects? Yeah. And uh, I have something pretty exciting. I just got it in the mail. It's like a new, a copy of my new book, Rainbow Science, uh, written by Artemis Rorig. I hope I didn't butcher that, but this is coming out in March uh, with Story Publishing. You move it, let, let, like zoom in on these beautiful characters. I know it's backwards, um, but oh, it's not. It's so it's not backwards. Backwards. oh, it's not. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, this book is. It comes with uh, some really fun rainbow glasses, but I think it's just kind of taking the love of rainbows and helping children understand the science behind it and, and why they exist and um, kind of getting kids maybe too that aren't super into science, uh, just introducing to them the idea that like science is everywhere and it's nature and it's part of us. And um, yes, it, it's, it's anti-science people. Yeah. Um, so I really love doing this book because there's, um, this is hard. Do it. There's like little experiments to do. Uh, this is one of my favorite kids in this whole book. I just love drawing the children. Um, so there's little experiments and crafts you can do, which um, I grew up with those like 70s craft books. And so as an adult, I collect them and I loved that I got to do um, some of those in here. Um, I want to let me open it to one of my favorite spreads. I did a, a house. And we got to show the inside. Oh no, that's a neighborhood. Hold on. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Here we go. It was like a little cross section of a house. I don't know if you can see, oh. but it was just so fun. Look how much she puts in an illustration and the variety of colors. Each piece isn't the exact same colors over and over. And she just, there's so much to look at in detail and it's beautifully painted. My other favorite one is there's like, like a dance, a dance, a disco scene. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of fun just, you know, drawing kids in the, you know, that like over exaggerated. Um, I really love children are really hard to draw. I think they can be really challenging, but I really love drawing them because I feel like I'm like drawing my little kid self and like I picture my friends and my family as, you know, little kids, like the grown people and kind of like, oh, I wonder what they did when they were children and how they acted. And I kind of just, I don't know, use that as inspiration. Um, so I'm excited. This comes out March 19th. Um, so that was like a really special little sneak peek. I haven't really even looked at it yet. I was saving it. And then this one just came out um, in September or November. I'm sorry. Uh, the Good Luck Book. And it's written by Heather Alexander and published by DK. And then I believe it's Penguin Random House here in the States. But I could be That's wrong. Right. The inference confused me. But this one is basically, um, again, like sort of 
a learning book, um, Celebration of Global Traditions, Superstitions, and Folklore. So it's stories from all around the world. Um, and Ruth is in here too. <laughs> uh, but I got to do about, I got to do the cover and about seven spreads. So they kind of are spread out throughout the book. Um, let's see if I can, oh, here's one that I really had fun doing a dragon. And then this atlas dude and the stones and gems i like those it was really fun i just i do love learning new things okay here's a fun spider that i like i'm not a big spider fan but i really oh, that's a good one i don't like drawing him um yeah so that was really fun. that gold foil on the cover it's it's like a varnish yeah it does look like gold from here it's a it's I think the cover came out so like I'm very pleased with it yeah it's very eye-catching and I did have this is kind of an interesting tidbit when you're if you I do a lot of hand lettering too and um I did this with hand lettered uh treatment but then the publisher and the designer decided that if it was hand lettered, if they were going to be printed in different languages, it would be hard to translate and more work and, you know, and money. So we decided to do a typeface treatment. Um, and, you know, sometimes that is the way to go. Um, I have a book um, called Herstory, and now it's it's printed in over 18 languages at this point with Nosy Crow. Um, and the the fourth follow up to that book hopefully will be printed in some different languages. But for now, it just um, made uh, the New York Times gift guide, so I was really excited about that. Yeah, oh. the New York Times gift guide. guide? Yeah, I didn't know about that. That's great. I was really excited. Thank you. Um, so that was that was a cool thing. But yeah, I just, I mostly do books. I do a lot of puzzles too, though. Um, I do some greeting cards. I do gift product with Loop Q. Um, I like to try a lot of different things. So I'm not one of those illustrators that um, I, I have much respect for the people that can, that have a lane and stick to it. I'm just not one of those people. I like to dabble and learn different things. Uh, I get bored, so. Well, this is a great career for those of us who get bored and like new and exciting things. I, when I was an illustrator, I loved it, the old days, the phone would ring. It's the greatest, the studio <laughs> line. And like, what cool project do they want me to do? What manuscript am I gonna read? What, you know, it's it's just, I yeah, it's great. I love it. Well, I love being an agent and teacher now. Thank you, that's fantastic. Impressive people, isn't it? She's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Lydia Graves with the beautiful artwork. Hey. What is one of our newest artists? We just scooped her up from class. By the way, we scooped up Lydia and Takeda from class. And Sarah and I were debating because I scooped Sarah up 10 years ago at the beginning of math. She took the first maths course. And I don't know if I saw her in there and that's how I scooped her. She thinks it was from Instagram. We don't know, um, but it didn't hurt. So no. how I get my artists now is 99% through my courses, Make Art That Sells. Lydia is one of the most recent artists to be scooped up by Lilla Rogers Studio after I spotted her in class. She's been represented since the end of 2022, not even a year. Lilla's always looking for fresh talent in class. Lydia is an educator and illustrator from Atlanta, Georgia, who now lives in Birmingham, Alabama. She makes art for children's books, toys, games, home decor, and greeting cards. And we're actually working on the development of her brilliant style so that we can pitch it to a number of markets. So she doesn't have products to show yet, but we are going to talk about her incredible art, and you'll see why I wanted to take her on. So do you have some work to hold up? I do, yeah. I have this, the piece behind me is a, a puzzle 
that um, I created in hopes of licensing it. Um, and then I'll turn it off the background so you can see. Um, Talk to Lydia about doing puzzle, a piece for a puzzle with characters and not human, we said animals and lots of like scenes and locations. So do you want to, can you pop that up again easily? Yeah, let's see. So it's not the, you can't see the whole thing in the background, but um, it's a, it's like a food court <laughs> or a food hall um, for animals. Um, and so there's like above some little turtles and uh, it, actually the idea came from um, a character that um, was it in care? Was it in, I can't remember character boot camp, Lenny, the lemur um, with, um, that Zoe wrote about. And so right above my head, you can see their feet, Lenny the lemur's feet. So I just played off of um, that character to develop the rest of the puzzle. And what's so great about it again, like I told Sarah is all, there's so much to look at, particularly for a puzzle. So what we're doing as an agency is working with Lydia to take her gorgeous style and like we said, make a puzzle like this. And this is a different medium, style's the same, but her medium. So we explain normally your procreate and this is watercolor or is this This or is actually, normally I am procreate and this is also procreate. I'm just, um, I'm a little bit looser and uh, I mean, a lot of it's very tight, but uh, in the, rendering of it I, I normally render even more <laughs> and I'm trying to let go of that a little bit um, no, no, we don't yeah. want you to let go we want mm. because balance um, it well just to have mm. both particularly yeah. for children the softness is so important mm -hmm. sure books for a kid puzzle for older it's really varied you've got you've got Takeda's work who's very flat graphic and gorgeous you've got sarah's that's very painterly both and they both do kid and adult so no it's just working with that okay we're yeah. more artwork to show i do yeah so i have a couple of prints i've been working on uh some new stuff for the menagerie um that's coming up in february so there's some sneak peeks into some little greeting card that I haven't even sent this to y'all yet um some little holiday greeting cards um of mice and a um mushroom <laughs> and then um I've been working on some repeat pattern oh that's fantastic uh, thanks I cool. just printed out these for you and then this morning I was playing with my paints and um which I don't do as frequently um and would like to do more Procreate's just so accessible and I can sit on my couch. I can do it in my car, not while I'm driving, but <laughs> like when my kids at <laughs> when my kids at football practice, I sit in the car and I draw and listen to podcasts. So um, oh, yeah. says, oh, that paint is amazing. Christine's amazing, Lydia. That's wonderful. Um, Kim, would you put up the poll? Lydia, did you have anything else to any more art to show? Um, only I have just one more and it's okay. it's a little so I'm I'm considering doing some um okay. there you go so it's hard to get it in there so doing some tarot cards maybe a tarot puzzle tarot themed puzzle so this is the first good. yeah mm -hmm. that'd be good yay okay let's dive into the questions don't forget two things uh, we'll do a giveaway at the end where you get to pick any course you want as your prize, any course you want, which is pretty amazing. And also, um, please, if you're going to sign up for classes for next year because you want to be an illustrator or better illustrator or get more work or just enjoy lettering, I have this incredible new lettering course. People are signing up for it like crazy i'm really excited brand new course and i have my oracle course which i'm very excited about as well 
And uh, I've got Tamisha's course, not Takeda, Tamisha, who did Redrawing Black History, which many of you took. And um, so a lot three new courses. Anyway, if you're going to do it, do it during the sale. It's our biggest sale of the year. You will save money and it's it's a really good thing. So I need to remind you to sign up, go to makeartthatsells.com and get on there to get your courses. So what I want to ask everybody first off is which maths courses did you take? And how did they help you? And let's go back to Lydia for that. So Lydia. Sure. I think uh, I've taken all of them. Um, <laughs> I do. Um, and and most recently illustrating children's books. Um, I, I think my favorite so far. I don't, I love the boot camp. Um, and I think because you get a little taste of everything, that one's really fun. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to the lettering yeah. class though. That's, yeah, that's at the top of my list. Hmm. And you know, with lettering, I'm highly encouraging my own artists to take it because I don't think, I don't really see anyone out there pretty much, my artists and, and generally speaking, where people are doing lettering as fully as they could and I have so many tools and techniques and styles for the artists to learn that I've actually gotten better uh, with my own just hobby lettering, I'll call it my journaling. But it's really, really important. You see with this art, these artists, the work they showed, how much lettering is in their work. And I want them to push it even further. So I make courses that I think are useful. So how... So Lydia, did uh, Matt's help you to develop your portfolio and your style? How did it do that? A hundred percent. Yes. Like I, I knew, like I would see illustrations and I didn't, I didn't understand how to get into the business of it. And um, like, I am a painter. I have a BFA. I painted portraits, like just commissions from, you know, people. And so um, getting into illustration, like you're, I mean, the mats classes are, were perfect because I've learned what, um, agents and art directors are looking for. And, um, it helped me to develop my style, um, over time, mm -hmm. just taking lots of classes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the idea too. The the reasoning behind mats is, and when I first started, it's like people, you've got to make work that we as agents and clients, companies can use. I want to teach you about the market. So you make pieces that fit that a bolt fabric company can buy. They're not going to buy a nude picture or a journal page when they want a repeat of something that can be made into fabric, I'm showing fabric, or a book. If you want to illustrate a picture book, you can't submit repeat patterns. You need to show children and children in poses and consistency and beautiful scenes, <laughs> questions and emotions. You know, I needed to teach everybody what they could do to have a lucrative career, all the different markets. So, and it worked beautifully. Then I realized, oh, I'm teaching all these people. Now I can pick the best ones for representation. Ooh, devious plan. Like, <laughs> so um, that worked out really well. So that's why I do what I do. Uh, again, sign up 50% off this. I don't know when it ends in a few days. Um, okay, Takeda, tell us about math classes, which ones you took or loved or helped you. Okay. Um, well, the first one I took was assignment boot camp. And I really like that one because I feel like that helped me with the portfolio building part because at that particular time, it was like, okay, I've been working on my style and, you know, I want to get into illustration, but I don't really know what to include in my, in my portfolio. Like, what should I be, you know, doing there? So I think that really helped me with, with that. And I also did the home decor which that one like opened my mind like to like so much stuff. It's still kind of overwhelming. I need to 
like do that a couple of more times to really grasp because I do want to do more work in, in that home decor um, area. Um, and the children's book one was very helpful as well because I know um, one of the first times we met, you asked me, did I ever think about doing children's books? And I was like, well, you know, I don't really have a cutesy style. <laughs> So I didn't think that, you know, I could really fit into the children's books world. But, you know, strangely, that's a lot of the jobs that I have gotten have been in related to children's books. So um, I tell you, yeah, style. I don't want you to do a cutesy style. I want you to do you. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what I've learned from that. And and, you know, speaking about like lettering a lot of the jobs that I do get they're like oh we like your lettering we want to incorporate that so a lot of the children's books with the with the titles and everything they're like oh we really want you to you know do your lettering as a part of that and interestingly enough for that I didn't really think I was good at hand lettering <laughs> because I was I was thinking about you know the technical way of doing it and I'm just this type of person. I get a lot of the books and I do take classes and everything and I get the gist of it, but it's like for my mind, it's like this automatic resistance to doing it <laughs> exactly the way that you're taught to do it. And it was kind of that way with hand lettering where it was just this automatic resistance to do it exactly the way that I was taught. And so it's like, okay, I was like, okay, I want to do hand lettering. I want to incorporate hand lettering, but I'm just going to do it the way I want to do it. <laughs> and that should be <laughs> And I'm the same way. Don't tell me to copy one style. First of all, I show you 15 different styles that you work on it, one a day and you develop them and then you get an assignment. So I'm not saying, I looked at all these lettering courses that were out there. I'm like, we're just learning this person's one style and you're not doing my brush lettering. You're mm -hmm. doing hand lettering based on, oh, look, look, what's, this is graphic. You're not doing graphic. You're doing, you're doing hand lettering, but Im imagine if I taught you what's so cool about this style and this style. And of course I had to buy these for the course to photograph. <laughs> so, um, you know, and chocolate bars, poor me. So, <laughs> I don't want to say everyone copy me. I want to say, here's a buffet, draw them all, learn what you like, don't like, riff on them. And then when you do your lettering, you actually can do a bit of this. And maybe the capital E is sort of that style. And then this one has swashes and this one has diamonds and this is block and so forth. So you can create your own lettering way. And it doesn't even have to be a, a font. You evolve each letter as you write the word. So um, uh, you can tell I'm excited. By the way, my lettering course in France in April sold out. Lydia will be there. It is sold out, but you can <laughs> take my boot camp one in Jan in February, March, April, three months, something every Monday with three art direct art agent designed assignments art agent designed assignments for you one per month based on what you've learned over the weeks of the month so i say this if you're going to take one course take that i hope you don't just take one but take it okay so miss walsh i know i think you just took the one course make art that sells a the very first one with the five markets but i think in our i've taken the children's book course and then your arty book pitch the I've taken two oh. children's book classes yeah okay good good so talk to me about that um well I'll just say to everybody here um the hype is real and I'm not I don't I don't say things that I don't mean um I want to say something really quick about the way that you that Lilla teaches class um I think it's really unique in the way that Lilla has an amazing business sense. She knows what she's doing. She knows the markets. She's been doing it for a long time, but also has such a curiosity. So she keeps things fresh and she's always learning about how the industry is changing. 
But I think the thing that makes Lilla's classes unique is that Lilla um, understands in order to be successful as a commercial artist, you also have to be personally satisfied. And I think she helps you get in touch with who you are as an artist and your voice. And she helps you align those things with the market and sort of that's like the magic combo that I feel like she has the corner on because she, not to be all woo woo, but I think there is an important angle to really tapping into who you are as a person, because otherwise, why are we doing this? Why are we doing, why are we making art? Unless we're going to go work for someone else, we're the one driving the ship. And I think you have to be really, you have to have your finger on the dial of like who you are as an artist so that it kind of shapes your career in the right direction. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, but I think that's kind of the biggest thing that sets her classes apart for me. I've I've dabbled in other classes and she gets into the spiritual angle of it a little bit that I feel like is very, very important to set things on the right course from the get-go, um, so. I love you, Sarah Walsh. <laughs> beautiful thank you it's um, just true i'm i'm serious like i'm not i want to like uh, hype is real they're great they're i've never regretted taking a class i've always been like duh why did i wait so long to take this class that's that's basically my reaction within like a day of taking the class i'm like why were you being stubborn and dragging your feet it's an investment and i also am the kind of person i need external pressure um, I have been wanting to write and illustrate a book for God knows how long. I've illustrated over 20 books for other people. And when I took Lilla's uh, children's book illustration course, and then the other one where you develop your own stories, I learned so much and it really helped me think differently. And I already, I felt like I grew so much from just taking the class, um, as far as the lettering class, I can only imagine it's, you know, more of the goodness that I've experienced. And I, uh, for most of the books that I've illustrated over the course of my career, I usually do the, the hand, the title, um, at least that, if not um, a lot inside, like the bigger type. Um, and I think it really takes your style um a next level basically um it kind of feels more cohesive when you're also the one doing the lettering and you can think of the big picture and you can think of the layout as a whole and it's not piecemeal and and it's more cohesive and connected I feel like when you're considering the the lettering so totally true and you get more work because you're almost like a graphic designer in a way if you can do lettering and the art you can do your own whole book cover you yeah, can do magazine article. You can do the whole, whatever it is. Um, I mean, I I I don't know, Lil. If you know this, uh, I don't. I didn't even get my degree in illustration. I got my degree in graphic design. So yeah. I'm kind of self-taught. Well, I kind of learned on the job at Hallmark with illustration, and then, you know, through work from you. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I don't even know. If my artists went to college, I don't <laughs> know if they graduated high school, I swear to God. I don't even know. It's all about the art. It's not degrees. It's not this. It's about the art. It's all about the art. Well, thank you. That was pretty wonderful. Okay, so question number two. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Um, what do you talk about being an illustrator? What do you like about it? And I know, Lydia, you're at the beginning stages of uh, professional, uh, so you can speak to however that is. We do have, let me just say with the poll, we have 62% um, of you watching have taken a Matt's course before. And uh, what is your background from the poll, the highest, 48% almost half are working illustrators or artists but, and want to level up your career. So, you know, I, and I have to say this, okay? I have to say this. I mean, I haven't taken a, every and seen every illustration course out there. You know, I know the big names and all that, but of, of companies. 
the work that comes out of my classes, incredible, incredible, incredible. And so many of the artists go on to be represented by me and, or other agents or get gigs. And I have amazing talent that comes back uh, course after course to repeat a course, to get even better, even if they're working illustrator. So I like to teach to the highest level. When I taught middle school, when I got out of art school in Oakland, California, and moved east for a little teaching job in rural New Jersey, I started a gifted class because I liked teaching the kids that loved it the most and the most talented. And now, of course, I like teaching top talent. But I also, I say this in class all the time, I'm most proud of my students that don't have an art background, that are here and brave and just trying to do and learn. I love those people too. And I support everyone. There's no snobbery, no elitism. Everyone has value. And the working pros, the hot shots in class help the newbies. The newbies ask questions of the hot shots in the Facebook group. We're all there to help each other. That's how life should be for everyone. So that's what we do. Okay, so enough about that. So which one of you wants to talk about the creative life? being an illustrator, creative career, what you love about it. I know what I love about having my own business. I'm the boss of my life. And I can, whatever I feel like I want to monetize, I want to make money with, develop my artists or write a course, I can do that. I have creative control. When I was an illustrator, I could change my medium or my style. I could reach out to different kinds of clients. I could get work. I had that control and that passion, the ability to monetize my passions. Okay, that's me. So who wants to go next? What do you well, like? Is? I'll go. <laughs> well, I, I'll start off by saying that it's fun, but it's also hard. I know like my husband, he, he does not work in a creative field. And so a lot of times he's jealous and he's like, you know, if I'm, if I'm stressed out, you know, because I've been working hard on a children's book or whatever, he's like, oh, it sucks to be you to draw all day. But, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of brain thought <laughs> that's going into everything that that's going on. And so that's, that's the, because I think sometimes, especially when it comes to these types of careers, you know, the visual arts or whatever, you know, the arts is there's just some type of idea that it's just all fun and, and games. It's kind of like, you know, you get to do like your kids stuff all day, but it's, 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 it's work. <laughs> it, it is there, there is some difficulty in it, you know? And so while it is fun, you know, there are also challenges and, uh, but I do enjoy it. There's nothing else I would rather do. Um, so I, and I do enjoy being represented by <laughs> an agent that can take, take away some of that business aspects of it that I don't have to think about, mm -hmm. that I can just, you know, say yes or no <laughs> to a job and don't have to do any negotiating and all that type of stuff. So that's, that's really fun too. Yeah, an agent is great because they do all the marketing, they do the promoting, the negotiating, the pitching to companies, the contract reading, the managing your image right, so you can just make art. So that's what's really nice about it. Okay, Sarah Walsh, what do you, you've been in the biz a long time. What do you like about being a creative? Um, I don't think I really know how any other way to be um i it you know to takia's point it, it is it can be very challenging and i think that's why you really have to absolutely love it and be obsessed with it um and be able to kind of get back up when you get knocked down and not really let it like end you you have to kind of just you know, I think you have to be having so much fun and have to be like 
kind of a bit of a maniac to the point where it just doesn't affect you because if it stops you in your tracks, then you're going to have a really hard time. Like you kind of just have to be having too much fun to let it affect you um, in the way that it will kind of stunt you, if that makes sense. Um, and I think the other thing is, um, I think it's hard when you're starting out. Uh, I remember when I, I got a job, I got the job as a designer slash hybrid illustrator right out of college. Um, I grew up in upstate New York and then I moved with my daughter to Kansas City. She was six. And I remember just being so uh, enamored and excited, uh, but I was lacking in confidence. But I think I was just so jazzed that I, it kind of got me through. But I remember just being very stressed initially uh, because that mus that muscle wasn't developed yet of like, show and prove like, oh, wait, I know how to do this. They gave me a deadline. I do the thing. I give them the thing and I do it over and over and over and over and over again. And over time you can handle, um, things as they get more challenging. Um, so I think, but, but the bottom line, again, I just have to kind of be like, wake up and be excited. I mean, I don't wake up every day and go, can't wait to make art. You know, it's like not <laughs> like it's not every day. It's not like that. It's like I need coffee. I feel like a troll. It takes me like 20 minutes to, but I'm like, I'm going to be 50. And I'm like, I just had these enamel pins made of this frog painting I did last year. And I just, I'm like excited about them. And I I think about that and I'm like, is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> if it is, I don't care. I love what I do. And I'm, I'm still, ex I like to make things and I'm really excited about them. And why not? What else am I going to do? Like what, you know what I mean? Like who cares? Like, well, it's also, we're so passionate about, I agree with you. Like, wow, I'm going to make these pins. You know, it's like, I can't wait to work on the materials list or something for class or you know, there's just so much. And when you love it and you're willing to work hard, yes. love it, you're willing to work hard and you're open to learning and growing. And I always say this, please take courses. I hope they're mine because I believe in them. Take anybody's courses. Just keep taking courses, get better. Even these pros take my courses because you have to be good, really good. And then you will make it you're motivated, you're persistent, you grow. And we also, uh, I want to mention deadlines. All my courses have all these tricks. I always say, I trick you into doing your best work. You don't even, you know, I, I want to like bypass the whole self-criticism, the whole, uh, um, you know, I can never think of the term because I hate imposter syndrome I hate it you're not an imposter you're not trying to pull any any wool over anybody's eyes you feel unsure that's a, that's normal every artist feels unsure in the beginning the way you get to feel more sure is by making pieces and getting better and then you you're allowed to feel unsure you're allowed to feel like you don't know what you're doing you're allowed to have your taste level up here well, your art is not quite there yet. That's fine. That's normal. So one of the things I do to trick you, I don't want you to take a course that you're not going to do, that you're not going to show up for. That's why I've built in things like the deadlines, the gallery you have to submit to. And in the live courses, I review some work to get you to do your best in hopes that you will get reviewed. I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve I've been teaching my whole life and I raised two children. So, you know, I know how to, and my children, I would say my family, everybody's an independent contractor. Like it's herding cats. Nobody, I'm like kids when they're little, let's all do this. No, they weren't just going to snap to and obey. Could someone please obey their mother? And just, <laughs> no, I had to learn tricks. So I know how to teach. I do. I would like to add that that's one of the best things about the class that I enjoyed, especially with the home decor, was going over the live reviews because you learn mm -hmm. so much more 
<laughs> in the live reviews yes. than just you know the readings and everything yeah yeah like if if you just did the pieces and put it on social media that's great but but why is this piece good why did Lila pick this piece what is she trying to teach us you know what can we learn how can we get better yeah Lydia you're a teacher an art teacher you understand I am yes and it y'all talking about the courses it what's funny is that even though like you represent me now and you're so generous with your time. I can book an appointment and we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm still motivated, motivated by the lives. I still want to get in them. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's, it, it's great. It's fun. Uh, and I've learned a lot from you as a teacher and how to motivate my students for sure. Um, yeah, you got it. They have to have, I mean, we all have to, are a lot more motivated by fun and joy than, you know, or strangling it out of you, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited in the boot camp, lettering boot camp. You're all going to do the same assignment, but the text that each of you are going to do for the product, which I cannot say because I like you to have the surprise element, everyone's text is going to be different based on this little. This mm -hmm that you will do so you know it's fun it's going to make everybody's lettering different you're going to like enjoy seeing what others came up with so things like that I build in first of all if I'm bored writing the courses you're going to be bored taking it and why I could retire already I'm old enough you know why do I do this because it's really fun and I hope I'm helping so okay Lila you don't have to shout <laughs> 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 but you know one of the things I want to do one day is uh teach people how to teach art I want to do a course for teachers to teach art or whatever we'll see um okay so what else what else maybe um let's look at the Q&A and then in about a couple minutes we'll do a giveaway where the winner can t have any course of their choice for free, any maths course. How about that? I'm blowing the budget. <laughs> Side note, I really like your earrings, Lydia. They're cute. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll wear them for you. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's crushing mm -hmm. this game. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, boy. Um, Maria says, I designed my own book covers. Is the hand lettering course good to incorporate style that speaks my genre? I don't know. Well, yes, it's great for book covers. Absolutely. 100%. Um, Erica J asks, is there a class size limit for any of the classes? No, there's not. No class limit, which is great because a big class, there's a lot of energy. It's like going to a concert, you know, Woodstock. There's a lot of energy, a lot of people. And also in the Facebook group, which you don't have to join, but if you want to, there's so many resources. You can say like, what Procreate brush are you using? Or do you even like Procreate? Or, you know, um, what watercolor paper are you using? Like, uh, and often I'll be asked a question. I'll be like, you know what? That's a great question for the Facebook group. Um, Paige Pooler. Hi, Paige. As agent and artist, does that mean you aren't interacting, di interacting directly with the client? My agency, we put the artist together with the client and we step aside. We don't get in the way. It doesn't, it has no value to get into the creative process. I know some agents used to do everything out of fear that the artist would then take the gig you know all our artists have the contact information for all the clients because you know we trust them and uh let's see do all cat courses have live reviews as m peterson the courses that have live reviews are um are illustrating children's books find your Art Style with Style, and my arty book pitch, those three.
but all the the five live courses are live in that you're delivered the new content on a certain day, a certain week, and so forth. And there's that energy. I really recommend live courses because you will do you have a greater likelihood uh, of doing them. The downloadable courses are great when you want that information quickly. You can read through all the content, you can do the exercises, you can look at the trend boards and so forth. And those are great for you to kind of just get this great information and make pieces as well. Okay, you are welcome, Eleanor. Um, Evie Johnson, I'm in the UK and not mobile. Would this help hamper achieving a flourishing career or getting an agent? By not mobile, I think that means moving around. Uh, no, would not hamper in any way. I have so many artists who are in other countries. It's absolutely fine. Um, Jeremy Ross for Sarah, Takeda, and Lydia. How do you find Procreate for your professional work? Any concerns with concerns with CMYK sizing up art for rath raster images, etc. Anybody want who wants to take that? Um, well, I know for me, um, I would say the Procreate thing probably really depends on what type of iPad that you have, because I believe like if you have an iPad Pro, you're probably able to get a, maybe more layers um, at larger sizes and things. But um, as far as the CMYK, I know for me, I've run into a couple of instances as far as transferring that over to Photoshop. It's a quick fix, but it can be annoying <laughs> when uh, you have like a lot of layers and you have to go through each one. But um, I did take Kim's advice, which was to um, do it in RGB and then translate it over into Photoshop and just do the conversion to CMYK there. So it's a little bit easier. You still have to do some like uh, color, you know, hue or, you know, you have to fix it up a little bit there, but it's still a lot easier than having to go layer by layer by layer. So um, well, this is the perfect kind of question for the Facebook group. You will get so much great advice in there for all those technical questions. Okay, um, last question, Vivi. How do you know when you're doing a good job at illustrating, like when you're good enough to get work? One of the ways is, is that I can answer is, are you getting into the reviews? That's a really good clue that you're ready. Not the only clue, but it's a good clue. Um, if you promote to clients, a whole bunch of clients and you get response or work, then of course, you know, it's unknowable and there's no one way to answer, but that's the most sort of quantitative answer I can give you. Any last words of it? Oh, what advice before we do the fabulous giveaway where I'm breaking the bank? Um, what advice, ladies, do you have for people who really want to up their game? Maybe they are illustrating or they want to be an illustrator and they want to get better. What do you recommend besides taking math classes? Um, besides taking math classes, I would say just continue to draw and share your work regularly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say, <clears throat> like, depending on the markets that you're currently working in, ask yourself if there are different avenues that you want to explore. Like if you are primarily children's book, um, if you wanted, if you were curious about home decor, then or like what kind of products are you gravitating toward? Like when you're just like a person out in the world and kind of research what those companies are and what kind of things that they make. Um, and then from there, you know, see if it's something you enjoy doing, you know, you could give yourself some assignments or you can find a class with Lilla that aligns with those things. But I think kind of where you're curious and like making versions of that I think gets helps you grow the most when you like get specific about what you want to do I love that what you're saying Sarah is no 
really think deeply about what you love, what you mm -hmm. want. Go look at at the kinds of products. Go to the bookstores. Go to libraries. Go to gift and boutique shops. Go to fabric shops, or all online. And look and look and and tune in. Like you know what? This really excites me. I'm like, yeah. your body will tell you all, give you all the information by your excitement, your energy, or you go, oh. And that's not for me. I don't want to do that. It's great to yeah. listen to. You want to know what you don't want. That's as important, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. What floats your boat? And then can you make that? Can <laughs> could you do that? <laughs> floats your boat. And can you make that? I love that, Sarah. That's <laughs> fantastic. Wow. We should talk about you doing a book on like how, how people can get great at their art. Wouldn't that be good? That would be fun. Yeah, we should do that. I think everyone is creative and I get into disagreements with people's at people at parties in the corner because I, I have friends that are like, I don't think everyone's creative. And I'm like, I don't agree with you. I think everyone has, not everyone has the passion to be fabulous. I think it's just like creativity could be this and that it gets so many different things, but I think, I think our world likes to convince people that they're not creative because I think the world benefits from like people fitting into shapes versus like not fitting into shapes. So mm -hmm. I would love to explore a book about just how to be a, a child when you're old, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to. I just had to share a, a favorite quote um, for something for my teaching job. And um, I found this quote by my Maya Angelou that said like creativity, like can't be used up. Like you, you just, the oh, more yes, you I use it, the more quote. you, yes. there, you know, the more yeah. there is. And I thought, yeah, you that, don't run out of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's just a muscle that has to be moved. Yeah. Yeah. And like supportive people around you. Um, that's true. Yeah. Oh, quick question. Sher Sherry Goodall, do I need lettering experience to take the lettering class? All you need to know is how to use a pencil I, and then a, a marker. The rest I'll help you with. But it's all, it's actually kind of easy. I'm really just teaching you a whole bunch of techniques to try that I think are very, very cool and marketable. Okay. Thank you, ladies. That was incredible. I have a million more questions we didn't even get to, but let's get to, don't forget 50% off. Do sign up, sign up. You will not regret it. Okay, so we do a giveaway. Kim, are you on base in the background? We are doing a giveaway. I'm going to name a category and um, good, she's here, good. I'm going to say a category you can guess as many times as you want. Um, and we have a lot of people here, so the answers will go flying by. Kim and I will look to start it. <laughs> first first the correct answer that we see. It may not be the first answer, but it's the first one we see. You get what you get and you don't get upset. And that's how it goes. And then look, I didn't even give the category yet. And the mm -hmm. um you will get to pick any course that you like for free. So that's pretty good. Okay, ready? The category is a color. Go. Wow. <laughs> so fast, you can't see it. Wild. <laughs> Way too fast. If it went through, I... Uh, oh, slow I, them I, down, I, Ella. Slow them I down. I saw it. Yeah, I'm slowing it down, too. I just, I scroll really slowly. Um... Holy smokes. I know. Wow, That's there's cool. like some creative color. <laughs> Let's see. I saw it go through. Okay, oh, starts God. with the letter I. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> go. Boom, boom. Jen Spooner Indigo. And it may not be the first one, but it's the first one I saw. Jen Spooner, mm -hmm. are you yep. here? Yeah, you're here. Of course, you guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, congratulations. So Jen, she squealed. She mm -hmm. wrote, Jen, do you know what course you want to take? Do you know what course you want to sign up for? Let's give her a minute to think or type. Illustrating children's books, please. Good answer. Most expensive. Awesome. So that was good. Get your money mm -hmm. towards 
So you're going to write to hello at makeartthatsells.com. That's hello at makeartthatsells.com. It's uh, Louise, and you're going to say, I won illustrating children's books by guessing Indigo. Uh, and she will set you up. <laughs> Yay! She's just, like, just melting into the floor. Oh, I wish I just gave away courses all day long, but I put us out of business. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a course and you get a course. <laughs> like Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so that concludes this fabulous Zoom. However, next week, and I don't know when, it says somewhere, I'm doing one with all the teachers. And you can listen to the teachers, hear about my fabulous wow. co-teachers. I should say co they're all my co-teachers. And um, that will be really interesting. You can ask specific questions. Um, um, Lila, can you describe what find your style will be like? Yeah, I want to talk about that. And I'll be talking about that more next week with, with Tamisha. So everybody wants to develop their style. Well, how do you develop the style? And the coolest way we could come up with that we love and excites us, Tamisha and I, we, we wrote an... Um, do she does the lion's share of the course with my oversight but we felt that vintage would be very inspiring you're not going to be too influenced by contemporary work you're looking at cool old stuff and objects and hats and jewelry and clothes and oh, dish yeah. to be know. motivated to develop your style so uh and then she has interviews with four fabulous women, all black women in history who were creatives, very inspiring how they did against odds, like incredible work you. And then on Fridays, she does, she's going to dress up in her cool vintage stuff. She like me is a vintage freak. She's going to dress up and hold poses and you're going to draw every That's time awesome. to get your, I mean, sign up just for that to get your 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 um drawing of, of people in and then half on that day as well when that's over she'll throw you into a group with two other people from class and with a particular topic that you all talk about about illustration and so forth so um it's it's really extraordinary there's no course like it and that you can talk all you want about how to develop a style but this is really going to sort of break open a, a lot of you know oh I draw this way and this is what I'm going to do like I'm going to draw this thing and this thing and these different things that I'm excited about it's exciting you visually and if you're excited visually you're going to want to draw it and so our job is to show oh she's going to take you on a tour of vintage shops in New Orleans it's packed full it's really good so in uh, January 15th is Manifest Your Dream Creative Career. You can read all about all, that's the first one. Read all about them on the Make Art That Sells page and you will get all that fabulous information, okay? And I hope that helps you. I could go on and on, but I won't because we have to get back to our, our illustrating and agenting careers. Thank you, Lydia and Takeda and Sarah. This was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Tamisha should have her own show, Karen. Yeah, she probably will one day. So, and you can say, I took her when she taught at Max. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, our guest illustrator stars. We're really grateful to you. Mm -hmm. for your Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you in class. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Take the class. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>